Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now on our first two tutorials, we covered the basics of getters, setters, member attributes, and in our second tutorial, we covered the basics of inheritance. Now in this tutorial, what I plan to cover is the uh, sort of the solidity way for access modification, as well as error handling, because they kind of come hand in hand. And obviously, as we kind of touched on access modification in the previous tutorial, I actually want to expand on that a little bit more. Now to begin with, I am going to first address the issue that I actually caused in the last video where I simply had the check value the wrong way around. I had the amount checking if it was more than or equal to the value. So actually on the GitHub, I've corrected that and left a little comment on it. So jumping straight into access modification, um, I'm going to address the first issue that I raised last time in regards to our bank. Now with our bank, anyone can access it, which is something that we potentially might not want to do. So to do this, what we're going to do is create a modifier, which will only allow the creator of the contract to actually add or remove a value to, or sorry, should I say, deposit or withdraw an amount from our bank account. So to do this, what we first need to do is create a private attribute which is going to be called uh, owner now we're going to introduce a new data type to this is called address now an address is simply an ethereum address uh, which can obviously be set to any ethereum address that you can you can basically pull out the sender now i'm not going to go too deep into what data is in the sender now the sender is essentially the message which comes from the ethereum blockchain essentially so when you create a contract or you interact with a contract you send a message and within that you have access to the sender now what i'm going to do is first create a new variable called address and we're going to make this private and we're going to call this owner so what that's basically saying is that this is going to be the owner of the contract now in this case it's going to be me because i created this contract and to define it what we're going to do is in the constructor of bank we are simply going to state owner is equal to the message sender now, as a constructor is only called once on the initial uh, construction of the object, this will never be called again. So that's absolutely fine and should obviously um, be set within the blockchain. Now, to use this, um, this owner, what we're going to do then is create a modifier. Now, we're going to do this with a, a modifier, fun uh, well, sort of like a, an owner function constraint. So we're going to define this by first defining the keyword modifier. And then we're going to say, say it's called something like owner funk. And owner funk is basically saying that our, our basically our modifier is an owner based functionality. And simply to do this now, all we're going to do is introduce some error handling for this. And um, this is kind of why it's a two sided tutorial. And all I'm going to do is simply state um, require owner is equal to message sender and then all you have to do after that is an underscore semicolon the reason that you basically have to put the underscore semicolon is that is in essence your function that's being that's being executed so when you state when you basically apply your owner funk modifier to a function it will execute this before executing your function so obviously you can potentially move the function before your requirement or after it it's, it's, it's subjective and it's kind of how you want to structure your code now the reason i've used require there is actually three ways to sort of throw an error in solidity you can use throw which i actually don't advise using because i can show you a very simple example all i'm going to do now is create a fun uh, function called uh, test throw and all that do is throws now the first thing that um, the solidity compiler will tell you is warning throw is deprecated in favor of revert require and assert 
What that means is they plan to get rid of that function. It's currently fine, you can use it, and you know if you do use it, that's up to you. But in later versions of Solidity, and I'm not sure, but I believe it could even be as soon as Metropolis, that is going to be removed. So anytime you use a throw, consider using something like require, um, revert, or assert. Now, I'll cover the differences between the three after I've basically applied this uh, modifier to a basic functionality. Now, because I have a withdraw and deposit mount, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the requirement of an owner func to these two functions. All you have to do for that is after your or your parameters, you simply state owner func to both of those and now no one but the owner of the original contract can modify them. So let's give you a little example of that. So if I create my first contract, you have your deposit and your withdraw. So for instance, with my deposit, I should have a balance start well, a start and balance of 10, which is fine. Now, if I deposit, um, I say, let's say another 10, it should allow me to do it, which is fine. It has done. And it should also let me withdraw 10 which is fine, again, it has done. Okay, so you can specify in this compiler here the account in which you want to use it for. So if I now switch that to a different address, obviously one that is not going to match our initial creation address, and try and deposit money, I'm going to get an exception. Now, this exception is being thrown by our requirement here. So that is basically a simple way of creating a contract which actually has modifier constraints of the owner who created it and that is basically in a nutshell how you can you can limit access to a contract now as i mentioned previously there is three ways to sort of well technically four if you want to include throw um, to kind of throw an error there's your require your assert and your revert now, to sort of expand on what I covered slightly before, I'm going to actually create a new contract for this just to kind of make it a little bit clearer. So, contract and uh, test throws. So, I'm going to call it for now. And in this, I'm going to create a function called test assert, and then a function called test uh, require, and finally, Actually, uh, two more functions. Function test um, revert. And finally, our function test throw. Now, all this um, functionality is going to do is essentially just error on any call you make. So, for our assertion, we actually need to require, we basically need to pass in a parameter of a Boolean. So, with this, assert false. That will throw an error because you're not passing the parameter of true obviously it's basically a logical requirement so you could also do something like this one is equal to two which we always know is going to return false then you have require so that's my assert again require and then again it passes a boolean value so in this case again two is equal to one which is going to fail then you have revert. So now revert doesn't require any parameters, so you can just execute it as is. The same with throw, but throw is actually a more of an operation rather than a function. Now, obviously, again, you can see here that when you actually use throw, it does complain. Now, let me just go into the differences of the three sort of assert, require, and revert. With assert, it is essentially more of validating uh, your input or functional input at runtime so you'd potentially do some data manipulation but before actually asserting that something is something else um, just a side note with assert if i'm correct the gas is always consumed on the um, message that's sent as well so that's always something to be mindful of require is more of a parameter requirement so for instance um, in this case we used above here 
um, we're requiring our owner to be the message sender and that would probably be the best scope to use that in. At the moment, if I'm correct again, the gas is consumed in the message but the if remember the opcode that's actually thrown for require is actually revert which i believe in metropolis will mean that require will no longer consume the gas i could be wrong with this but that is my understanding revert should revert the gas costs of the message that's sent and that's kind of the basic principle of it so if you wanted to like for instance check um, okay you're running an event or something like, or you're doing um, an ICO and you've run out of coins or tokens to sell you would revert any transactions that people try and purchase any of these tokens because it's unfair that you you're charged you're making them pay the gas price um, in other cases that you potentially want to sort of penalize them and make them use the gas would in theory be something like um, like we've got up here where they're trying to access functions they shouldn't have access to but i'm going to be nice with that sort of uh, requirement and basically say it's uh, it's a require now at the moment they are going to be penalized and they are going to be charged the gas price which is you know which is neither here nor there because obviously in metropolis that might not be the case throw does consume all the gas all the gas that's sent doesn't matter if you, it errors or whatever the gas is completely consumed so that's kind of all the four sort of ways that you can actually error handle at the moment now you could also add some error logging to certain events as well but i believe if you throw um, an exception errors aren't actually caught and I actually feel that I'm I'm not actually going to go too much into the error logging at the moment because I feel like that should be something for a later tutorial. I am going to cover one last thing which I feel like I potentially should have covered in the last tutorial as well was the access modification to a function. Now as you see here we have the access modification for a variable and we also have have access modification of our own sort of custom modifier. We can also add access modification to this as well. We can simply state uh, that these methods are spell internal or for instance private. And we can also still use our own access modifiers on these too. So for instance, if you wanted to extend the functionality of this, but obviously limit it to only the owner executing it, you could do that as well. Now, with that being said, what I will do is I am going to cut the tutorial short here. I feel like I've covered all the bases for now of just like a basic understanding of access modification um, in regards to owner contracts as well as error handling. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and hopefully I will be getting more content out soon. Until next time, I will catch you around.